said, I'm, I'm Ryan Dolly, Senior Solution Architect and Product Manager. I have with me Heather Gardner from Alliant Energy. We're going to be talking about a, a project that the two of us did together related to uh, kind of rethinking the culture and practice of business intelligence within Alliant Energy to take advantage of some of the features uh, that you, uh, you have available to you if you're on the 11.1 release and that you saw during the, uh, the demo that we just had. Um, I think that the, yeah, there we are. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we're very excited to share this with you. And, and I, I, I didn't know Dustin was gonna ask like who all has actually deployed those features, but I'm glad he did. Because really the, the message that we have today is all about how do you go about doing that, right? How do you think about um, the culture and practice of business intelligence within your organization today and how you need to uh, rethink it, redesign it, uh, redeploy it in order to take advantage of, roll out and be successful with these new features. I think uh, we've, we all had the experience, say, of going from eight to 10 and, and seeing Workspace and Workspace Advanced and thinking they were really cool and like, well, we're just gonna turn them on and then our end users are gonna use them all, right? Um, and that happened in, in very few uh, of the organizations that I work with. So um, with all that said, again, Ryan Dolly, Heather Gardner, um, we're, we're excited to share this with you today and I'll turn it over to Heather uh, to get going. All right, thanks, Ryan. Um, like Ryan said, I'm Heather Gardner. I'm a business analyst at Alliance. I've been there about nine years. Since the last five, I've worked with Cognos, um, doing various things as a business analyst and as a person who actually creates and deploys information. So today's presentation highlights a small but impactful product, project where PM Square came to Alliant Energy and helped us change our process and improve the way we work. We'll talk about um, Alliant Energy and what we do, how we use Cognos, how we changed our process, and we'll do a before and after and I will try to show you a demo of the super cool dashboard we put out and highlight our results and of course take any questions that you might have. So with the last upgrade from um, 10 to 11, we knew that we had to, 10 to 11. No, yeah, 10 to 11, sorry. Because the pictures are from eight, so. <laughs> With the last upgrade, we knew we had to work with our customers um, differently, and we needed to get them out of the old mindset of cubes and cross tabs and lists to modules, dashboards, and self-service. At the same time, we needed to work differently, and we needed to change the way we worked and how we managed our time and, how, and the work we already had. So PM Square assisted with the technical upgrade, and then we asked them to help us upgrade our business process and basically how we do BI. This part of the project was, could we find a way to take a request, prioritize it, and put it in the hands of the right people to get it out there? First, I thought I would tell you a little bit about Align Energy. So we are a Midwest Utilities company servicing Iowa and Wisconsin. We have about 4,000 employees. Um, we're publicly traded. And in, um, by 2030, we'll have a 40% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions, and that's pretty exciting. At the same time, we also plan on reducing our water usage by 75%, which is phenomenal. And then by 20, um, 2050, we plan on eliminating the use of coal altogether. So one of the things I'm proud about of being an Alliant Energy employee is our commitment to sustainability and the 17 UN United Nations Sustainability Goals goals like affordable and clean energy, climate action, and life on land. Speaking of life on land, look at that face. <laughs> this guy and 99 of his fellow goats are the first trip of goats to be employed by Alliant Energy. We hired these goats because, you know, they needed work. And <laughs> they munch on the weeds that are noxious on the site um, in our, at our Rock River facility in Beloit. So we bring them in two or three times a year, and they graze for two to three weeks, and they get all those weeds out. So I'm going to see. No, it's not. Uh, there was a video, but it doesn't look like it's going to presentation view. I didn't think it would work. The video is all the goats running down a hill. Yeah, just imagine. <laughs> just uh, and just uh, all these goats running. And my one of the interns I worked with this year. We were having coffee last Tuesday, and she said, whenever I'm in a bad mood, I just watch those goats. <laughs> and I had never seen that video, and so I watched that video, and I'm like, oh, it really worked, I feel happier. 
So maybe later we can watch the goats. So Cagnos with a lion energy, what does that look like? We've been using Cagnos for close to 20 years. Always with the standard, put the data in the warehouse, put the report in front of the person, um, meet their, their requirements, and nothing more. Um, I wrote up there that we had 1,400 users because I took that kind of from a distribution list, but quite honestly, every employee at Alliant Energy has the read access to IBM Analytics. So as soon as we can get them excited about it, we can, they already have the access to go. As you can see, we have um, run the gambit when it comes to the uh, products that IBM offered using pretty much all of them. Um, like Ryan had mentioned, Workspace and Workspace Advance, I was really excited when that came out because I did think it was super cool looking and I couldn't wait to get it in front of the people. And we worked super, super hard getting our training material, getting our data, and we were never able really to coordinate that information. So we trained the people too early, they got the data too late. By the time everything was said and done, we just moved the reports that we always used and business as usual. So we had tried and failed and we didn't want to fail again. So, in the past, we've tried to do it all. We've tried to do the big capital projects, manage our customer work, and push for self-service at the same time. By using Cagnos to prioritize our work, we we're better able to see where we can get the wins and promote, um, promote user adoption. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for standardization and doing things on a schedule, and there's, but there's a point where things get too rigid, and that's what we had to learn to overcome. And I just added this part in my presentation. So yesterday, Dustin talked about the mode one and mode two analytics, and I had this real light bulb moment. I even took notes. It was like, this is really, it resonated with me because that's what 10 to 11 was for us. We wanted to take 10 was our mode one, and we wanted to treat 11 like our mode two. So we needed to get that kind of momentum going. And that's why we chose to partner with PM Square, not just for the technical resources to get it done, but they bring that honest guidance to the table that enable us to get to the next level of BI reporting. <laughs> so, why change? People almost always change because something is broken, and in this case, um, that, was not, that was no different. So, we had become our own worst enemy. Without agile thinking and process improvement, work was always taking too long. Our internal customers really started to notice, and they started to maybe walk away from us a little bit. So you can see our processes, we have the request would come in. Requests come in all the various ways, right? Email, um, drop-ins, post-it notes left on your desk. And we took that information and we put it into a form on SharePoint. And then we took that SharePoint information and we put it into a form in Excel, because that makes sense. <laughs> because we need to get numbers. So SharePoint couldn't give us numbers and Excel couldn't gather our customer data. So we had two places. We had customer data and we had Excel to get those numbers so we could see what priority scores things got. And then after that, after in Excel, we put it into a product called ServiceNow. Um, ServiceNow is, the, uh, is a program that tracks uh, development from in review to migration to production. And that's our change management system. So we realized early that we couldn't actually change ServiceNow. So we had to change the way we get information into ServiceNow and the way we take information out of ServiceNow. So the governing principles, um, I like to think of governing principles as the reason for change. So we had to ask why, and I'm sorry, we had to ask what we were trying to change and what is our expected outcome. We, changed, we wanted to change the way we work with people and interact with people, identifying self-service, not just meeting with them and handing back reports, but actually getting involved in their business processes and helping them journey forward. And we needed to be able to have our, time, our, time, our team manage their time more effectively and be able to come in each day and open up one place and see exactly what they needed to get done. And we needed to use KPIs to show uh, progress, which is important, of course, for management and our team lead to be able to say this is what we're getting done and, and who has availability and who doesn't have availability. So that was a lot of talking for getting down to it. So when we realized we needed help, we had about 80 hours of Ryan's time and we had a lot to do. Um, this picture is one of the brainstorming workshops where we wrote down all of the things that the customer asked. 
So things like um, why is something broken, where is my data, um, can this report be yellow, those kinds of things. <laughs> and we put them into categories like managing resources and um, managing requests, providing help, access, and those kinds of things. And then we had to list out um, the things that made it more worthwhile, right? So uh, making a report yellow is not as important as generating a report for a capital project. And we wanted to gather those kinds of indicators so that we could score everything and know exactly what was important and what wasn't. And I think at this point, Ryan might want to talk about his approach to this. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, thanks, Heather. So uh, like Heather said, we, you know, this was not like a six month project or anything. We had roughly two weeks of my time. So I went on site at Alliant. We got um, the various stakeholders, a lot of members of the BI team in the room, and we just kind of tried to hash out, okay, where are we today? Where do we want to be in the future? Not necessarily from a process perspective, but like what are our goals, right? If we try to envision what our BI department should be like, like what do we see? And what do we see ourselves as individuals in the BI department doing? Do we want to just make reports, you know, for the next 15 years and then hit the retirement button? Or do we want to try to branch out and do something else? So we, we kind of gathered all of that information, put it together, um, came up with, you know, what our target was as far as, as how, it should, how it should feel to be on the BI team after the transformation is complete. Then we started looking more at the nuts and bolts process, where we're going to say, okay, what type of requests come in, right? And we, we always thought about it from the end user's perspective, right? The end user says, um, like, uh, do you have data X, Y, or Z, right? That's a very common question that you might get. I just, you know, I heard you guys have some reports or something, and do you have data about this? Um, so we categorized all that type of stuff all from that level all the way up to the power user who says, okay, what I really need you to do is I need you to go in there and I, I want you to change the detailed query so that it has this type of filter on it on the report instead of this other type of filter. And there are a few of those users at Alliant Energy who, who have that level of knowledge, right? Um, we categorized all that, we put it into buckets uh, at, with really the goal of trying to figure out, okay, now that we have our heads wrapped around how we want things to be and the types of requests we get to our users, how do we take those requests and put them through a process that results in us having the type of BI department that we would like to have, delivering the kinds of reports and dashboards and data models um, that are most useful to service these end user needs. That was kind of the main part of the goal here. And, and really what I did, I mean, I don't want to take too much credit. I came in, I, I really just helped them, help guide their thinking, uh, asked some decent questions, you know, to, to elicit from them these types of what are their priorities and, and what type of work do they do. I helped organize it and put it together and put them on a roadmap to get there, right? And we couldn't do any more than that in, in the amount of time we had. I, I, it was not PM Square came in and totally, you know, with either a pre-canned process that we just said, here you go, this is how you should do it. And it wasn't that I was sitting at a desk with Heather for, you know, six months uh, working through all of this. We, we came in, we set the goals, the priorities, we helped categorize things, and I gave them some examples of how to do it. And then at the end of the two weeks, it was up to them uh, to execute on it. And I, I think, you know, you'll see as we go through the rest of the presentation how they succeeded in doing that. We did succeed. So after, um, after uh, all of the 80 hours of work, um, we were able to um, effectively eliminate some of the pain points in our process. And like I said, ServiceNow is our change management tool, and you can't change change management, right? That's, that's from above. So we had to um, eliminate the data entry report parts. So now when a request comes in, it goes directly into ServiceNow, which is very exciting because those two other forms were kind of painful. And the information comes out of ServiceNow and goes into a dashboard in Cognos where the developers and the team lead and the business analyst, myself, can look at the request and figure out what I need to get done for the day. So if you'd like, I will show you what that looks like. Does anybody not want to see it? Yeah. <laughs> And I, I think a big part of that, the idea behind that, Heather, as you, as you switch over and pull it up, is really 
when we redesigned this process, we, we figured the first place to pilot it was actually on the BI team, right? Um, so we had to put some analytics in place for the BI team in order to be able to capture the data about the BI team's work and how they execute on it, um, and, and then you know, display it in a way that makes it easy to understand what's going on on the BI team. Um, we, we did all that to help improve how the BI team works, but also to pilot our process, you know, to say, okay, we came up with this new process, let's try it first on ourselves, see how it works, and work out some of the kinks before we roll it out to the end users and have them go through that process. So we started with just a, a basic um, one table to do it all. One table, all the fields out of service now. Fields like you know customer name, obviously, those kinds of things. But we are, there's also priority, and then there's a um, level of effort type of, of stuff in there. So we brought it all in, and we figured out what we had to do. And what we ended up having to do was create um, expressions around it. So we just grabbed, oh, that was the bad example. Yeah, Shouldn't be that's named okay. calculation name one, calculation name two. I'm sorry about that. You can see the other things are named appropriately. But we created the calculations to get some total scores and um, those kinds of information. And then all we did after that was create a dashboard. So the numbers. Um, I was thinking about this last night, and I was thinking I, I had gone through and I had kind of changed some of the, the due dates and whatnot to try to make it look better, and then I realized that no, it's this is probably a pretty accurate reflection of where our workload is right now, simply because our BI team has been pulled away from BI work, and we have to work on capital projects, so we haven't been getting very much work out of the deal, out of, um, I shouldn't say, we haven't been getting a lot of work out, but not our old work requests that are in this system. So when you come in in the morning, this is a great way to start your day. If I was the team lead, I could see here that I have the business group approval, and there's one waiting for my review. As a developer, I could see that everything is waiting for a development. Um, if I was the admin, I can see that five of them are in migration to production, and as the BA, I can see that some of them are in system testing, and I need to open those up and see if I can help those people get their testing done. This was just an overall KPI to help our um, upper management better understand exactly what we had um, been doing. And we just had an overall progress to see what's open and what's in progress and where they're falling in the calendar. This is one of my favorite charts because I think that it tells um, the story of where everything falls. So if it's over here and it's like, where it is, I have an estimated level of worth, it's 350 hours, so that's big, and if I can get capital dollars for that, I should. And over here, I have, that's a low estimate, it's two, but it scored, three, it scored a 325, which means it's on the higher end. So it's gonna be your big bang, less effort. That's gonna give me the most for my money. And then we created something that was um, developer specific. So if you go to the developer priority tab, I can choose a name. I'm gonna choose uh, my, our data warehouse developer, Kevin. And now he can see all of the rhythms he has. I keep saying rhythm, that's a request item. I shouldn't, I, I forget to say it. Request item, he can see all of the requests he has open. He can see where his priorities are and you can see when things are gonna be coming up. Heather, could you go back to the prioritization chart real quick? I can. Yeah. I, I also love this chart, and, and I just wanted to take a second to, to really make the point of how this is used. Is The idea behind this is you can take a look at it and you can try to figure out, okay, if you're doing your planning for the week, month, quarter, whatever, for your BI team, and you wanna understand what is it that we should focus on, you need to have a, a mix of you know the hard, uh, long-term projects that people are expecting you, you to, deliver, to deliver, but you can also work in, uh, once you've gone through all this prioritization effort, uh, work in things that are not going to take very long or very much effort to accomplish, but are going to have a big bang for your buck, right? And that's kind of how they use this, is you would look at this and you would say, okay, you know, something at, on, on the um, left end of the, the x-axis and at the top of the y-axis 
is going to be something that the BI team has said, this is only going to take me a couple hours, and we have determined that it's going to have a significant business impact, right? Once you have that type of information, it becomes very easy either as a developer who's prioritizing their own workload or as the BI team lead to take a look at it and say, you know, we need to find a way to work that in. It's only going to take two hours. So we need to find a way to work it into this week or next week or something like that to get it done uh, rather than letting it sit out there because it may seem like uh, a minor request. It's only going to take a little bit of time. So um, it, in my experience, a lot of times working with BI teams, those, those very minor requests end up getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back because you have very difficult, you know, 500, 1,000 hour projects that you're trying to get done. Um, but once, by being able to prioritize it in this way, you can see, yeah, it's only a two hour request, but we really do need to get it done as quickly as possible because of the level of business impact that that request has. <laughs> So one of my favorite deliverables from this project is this flowchart. And when you look at the flowchart, and I know everyone's reading it and being like, ah, it seems kind of basic, and it is. It's a no-brainer, but when you have someone who actually spells it out and says, look, this is how you process a request, this is the analytic flow to get you to Agile. And I want to talk quick about a customer that I just ran through this within the last few months. So we started with the idea, um, they, they came to me and said, I know you have some of our Maximo data. Maximo is a, a, work order, um, a work order program, I believe, owned by IBM. So we have two IBM products talking to each other. So we took their Maximo data, and they said, is it enough info? And honestly, it wasn't. We didn't have all the tables. We didn't have everything we needed. So we went back to the chart, started over, finally gathered all the information, came down. The system obviously was fine, so we went into the user access. And this was something where when you start thinking it through this way, everything flows so much better. You can't put user access first. You can't put the data first. You have to follow a pattern and get it all going a certain direction. So we needed access. Do, do they have access to IBM? They didn't, so get them at that access. Does IBM have access to Maximo? <coughs> it didn't, so get that access. And now we have everybody has the right access. So we get down to the existing content, and now we have existing content because we have that existing data. And this was my favorite part because it was the idea of a capable user, and, and this is where, um, where you can really see if you can start to push people towards being capable users, you can get closer to having good user adoption and user enablement. So I got them all the way through this and uh, eventually sat down, and it took me about four hours. They're all developers. Um, of one sort of, uh, and it took me about four hours of my time, two hours at a time, to actually run a data modules workshop with them and then a reporting workshop with them. And now they are a self uh, sustaining, self, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think um, if you could just go back to that one. I can. So, yeah, so one thing to understand about this chart, again, Heather said, like, this is. Maybe you're used to seeing flow charts that like you print out and put on the wall and they take up the whole wall and that's how you do your, your BI workflow. We really wanted to keep it simple where the endpoints were actually styles of BI or analytics, right? So if you look at this, we would say, this so we get all the way down to, do we already have existing content? That's saying like, is this data already in Cognos or not? If it is in Cognos, then we ask ourselves, are these enabled users? Have we taught them how to use Cognos? If the answer is yes, then we use the self-service reporting style of BI delivery, where we go to them and we say, okay, the data already exists. We don't need to do any ETL. We don't have to do any DW work, nothing like that. We're gonna go ahead and, and you guys are capable, so you're gonna build the reports. You're gonna build the data module, right? We'll support you, but we're not gonna build it for you. And having this workflow in place really enabled them to have that conversation and make that decision and not fall back on their old habit of, okay, just fill out the requirements form and we'll put it in onto the pile and you know, we'll build that report studio report for you in 10 months when we get around to it. Um, but really kind of gave, you know, gave them the momentum to say, you're gonna handle this yourself and we'll help you, we'll enable you, but you're really gonna do it on your own. And so each of these endpoints is really that, right? Agile Analytics is like the BI team doing the development, but not doing it in the old school waterfall way. It's instead of building an FM package, you build a data module. Instead of building a report, you build a dashboard. And you do get that into the hands of the end user in a week instead of in six months, right? Um, it's still the BI team doing it, but it's you know, using kind of a, a more agile analytics workflow. Um, 
advanced analytics gets into AI and data science and stuff like that. And then you know, your tried and true DW Cognos workflow that we all know we've been doing forever is still on here because it's incredibly important. You know, the point Brian made earlier about like you still have to send out these reports that have oper operationally critical to your organization and, and that's not going to go away. It's still represented here under governed reporting. And so I don't, we don't want to give you guys the impression that, that you know, we came in and now we're just doing everything loosey-goosey like in Tableau land. Um, <laughs> right? But, uh, but we still have a very structured, governed, high quality, you know, high, high quality data, high quality reporting process here at Alliant. We've supplemented it with these other processes that can help them deliver things more quickly when it's appropriate to use that type of process. So um, let's talk about the results. I put the results into two columns. Um, so we obviously improved the intake process. You saw it. I eliminated um, SharePoint and Excel from the process, so it's much easier to get the data in. Uh, we automated our scoring prioritization with adding those calculations to Cognos. We are able to actually do some, you saw the charts and stuff. Um, we're using Cognos to drive and run our team. They're able to now use a dashboard to look at their work and figure out um, what they need to get done. And of course, um, reviewing analytics makes them more accountable uh, to themselves and to management. Um, but in the spirit of transparency, I wanted to talk about that we, we, we got results, but we didn't get to the fullest potential. So like I mentioned, ServiceNow is only an IT program right now. We don't have our users using it. So the idea of a better user experience was we were going to actually create modules in ServiceNow for them to be able to actually click down and get farther in the service catalog to actually put in a request um, by themselves. And what happened was the ServiceNow developer uh, left and um, they did not replace him. So we, we really wanted that to happen um, so much that I actually looked into being a ServiceNow developer and I thought it would be easy, it's not. So uh, we decided not to do that part of it. That's something that we want to do, so we have all the documentation and everything ready to go when we are able to do that. Um, I feel like we developed fantastic KPIs, but I don't feel like the data has been there. We've only been using this process for a short time, so we haven't actually seen how well it's going to actually predict or tell us what we're doing. Um, I think they're great, but again, in the spirit of transparency, I can't say, yeah, they're 100% perfect. Um, we uh, have also just started advertising our um, improved services. So where it comes to operational awareness, um, our first couple projects have been successful because of these changes, and it is a positive story. But I think, and I think when word starts to spread, we're going to see true um, increase in requests and interactions, and we're going to get closer and closer to getting a strong user adoption. Um, when it comes to tracking our transformation, again, we're new and. Um, we're not new, we said we worked with this for 20 years. This process is new, and we're only now gathering the data. So once we get closer to that, we'll be able to tell a story. And I think as we gather the data, our customers, our work, and ourselves, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what next year looks like. So next year, this time, if I'm here, um, you can remember me as the crazy goat lady. I'm okay with that, but there's no make sure to go. You can come find me and ask where we are, and I'll be able to tell you everything's awesome. So I did also want to tell you specifically, um, I, I talked about how Maximo walked through the process, and um, this is an example of their work. They're, they we built a data module, they, they built a data module. And um, I'm going to get kind of weak in here, right? Because last Tuesday, they put their first report into production all on their own. So yay for Maximo team. <laughs> um, and the other example we have that went through the process went through a little different way. It went, because we realized that we couldn't enable the user. So this is the travel dashboard, and it was rolling out to senior executives. We were not going to have senior executives write their own dashboard, obviously. And the manager of the travel department um, wasn't someone that we could enable to do that. So this was one that we actually walked through the process and ended up with really good results, because we did the dashboard ourselves, quickly delivered it to the executives, and they're currently tracking spend using a dashboard that we built um, and put in production just two months ago. Yeah, and, and I, I think um, really just to, to highlight the point, I mean, the data module you see here was not developed by the BI team, right? These are um, resources that are not on the BI team, who Heather enabled, who are using data modules and dashboards and writing their own reports. And the BI team is just helping to guide them, right? But this has been deployed in a way where people always, 
I get asked a lot about data modules. I've kind of turned into the data module guy. And, um, and people, I, I get a lot of feedback from people on BI teams who feel that either the end users are, never, are not capable of using data modules or they don't want to give it to them for security or governance or data quality reasons. Um, and I think a big part of, of what Alliant Energy has achieved is, is they've shown how you can roll it out to those user communities. You can let them do their own modeling and do their own reporting. And you still have the ability to govern that, right? Heather can go in at any time and see in Cognos what model did these people build? Is it accurate? Is this join right? Is the data right? Um, whereas if they had just locked all these features off, what this team would have done is they would, because everybody has Power BI for free now in the world, it seems like. They would have downloaded Power BI, they would have pointed it to Maximo, and they would have found another way to do this type of thing. But by, by enabling the end users and using the workflow we designed, Heather and the team were able to keep that modeling and reporting in Cognos where they can help them and ensure that the data that's being delivered is of a high quality. Absolutely, and of course, who knows their data better than them? I'm, I'm not one who can look at Maximo data and understand it, so when they did their model, I. If I had done it, can you imagine all the questions I would have had to say? I would have had to go back a hundred times. Is this asset number matched to this asset number, or does this ID go to here? And there's all sorts of tables. There's like, I think we brought over like 400 tables for Maximo. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of data. So the path to success. So we changed our business, our path of business as usual to um, a path of success in just five steps. So. That makes it sound like it was really easy. It wasn't that easy, but <laughs> it was okay. We upgraded Cognos to Cognos 11 to help us modernize, and PM's Square helped us lay the solid foundation to make sure that small upgrades could easily be possible. We engaged PM Square to um, help us make the process better in just three show, or two weeks, 80 hours. Uh, we designed the new analytics process. We incorporated that technology to manage our process with ServiceNow and Cognos. And we implemented uh, the pieces of the new process that we could to enable self-service and change um, the way we do business. Any questions? 